Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are trying to understand the tips, tricks and time management related to the success factors of this examination. As a part of this tutorial, we are still with our chapter 4 discussing about the test techniques and we shall be looking forward to pick up the remaining three questions from this set A to talk about what could be the other possible questions which you can expect from the remaining topics of this particular chapter 4. To get started, the next question we have is question number 27 and we are talking about here that what is experience based testing. But let's look at the scenario here and topic and then understand what exactly it says. So, 27, talking about in your project, there has been a delay in the release of a brand new application and test execution started late. But you have very detailed domain knowledge and good analytical skills. The full list of requirement has not yet been shared with the team, but management is asking for some test results to be presented. So which of the test technique fits best in this situation? I think, again, this is pretty straightforward given that you have a good understanding of the situations where what can be applied. So throughout our tutorials, we have guided you where black box testing is applicable, what is the basis of white box testing, what is the basis of experience-based testing, where we prefer doing experience-based, where we don't prefer to do it as a first attempt. And this situation is perfectly matching with our situations related to experience-based. Because we told you there are three criterias where we look forward to conduct experience-based testing as a primary approach to test the system. Number one, where specifications are poorly defined. Number two, when you have time pressure. And number three, that when the team is not formally trained on fundamental of testing. So two of them is very well defined here in the scenario that one, you are running late with the release. And second, you do not have specifications listed or given to you, right? The third element here is also talking about the results, which might be a deviating element if you do not understand or do not remember that one of the experience-based test technique that is exploratory testing makes use of a document called as test charter, right? And test charter is a piece of documentation in exploratory testing, which would help you to document that what exactly was done and how much we have really performed as a part of the testing at a very high level. So yes, error guessing, checklist based testing will also have documentation, but will not be result oriented. To a certain extent, checklist will talk about uh, fulfilling all the questionnaires, but may not really be that great than that of exploratory. Okay, because checklist is limited to the questionnaire. So we would look forward to prefer something more important. So if I look at the options here, the option says checklist based testing, error guessing, exploratory testing, and branch testing. I think the only thing what we were supposed to find here is which one of the experience-based test techniques should be used here. And in that context, the right answer here is C, that is exploratory testing, which perfectly matches in this particular situation to go with the right answer for this particular scenario. So this is how sometimes something would be a little simple and complicated at the same time, but concluding that with a quick understanding and recalling of the knowledge would help you with the right. So throughout this session, all I'm telling you is that your preparation matters a lot and how much you have really spent going through the content will guide you better with the examination. Trust me, the mock papers are just to get aligned, but these are not the dumps which would help you with succeeding in the examination. Through these examination questions, we are trying to help you with the tips and tricks and solution so that you can understand the content better, right? So let's look at the next question and the next question here we are talking about is question number 28. And this question is talking about which of the following best describes the way acceptance criteria can be documented. So again, I think this was, this is one of the questions which we also covered in our regular tutorials during the uh, playlist. So I think uh, there are two different approaches, uh, two different forms by which we can document. One is scenario oriented and second is rule oriented. Okay, scenario oriented certainly means given when then and rule oriented means you can have tabulated like input and output. You can talk about bulleted points, you can talk about number points, but at the same time, we also mentioned as a part of the discussion that if you think there's any other way 
which makes your team understand the acceptance criteria better, then you can use it. But quite often, these are the only two options that are scenario oriented and rule oriented forms of writing acceptance criteria. So I think with that, we would have a very clear picture to the right answer, but still let's read the options carefully here. Option A says performing retrospective to determine the actual needs of the stakeholder regarding a given user story. Retrospectives helps you with uh, process improvement, but not about documenting the acceptance criteria. At the end of the sprint, we conduct retrospectives to gather the lessons learned, but that is not something which will help you to document as a format for the acceptance criteria. B says using given when then format to describe an example test condition related to a given user story looks pretty much relevant to that of the right answer. Let's look at C. C says using verbal communication to reduce the risk of misunderstanding the acceptance criteria by others. And I think this is right opposite to what we just said. That is communication that is verbal communication has the risk of message being lost. And we have so many examples listed every now and then on all the social media that how communication as being passed to people verbally and with signs can really lose the message and turn into something else. So written communication is only preferred to avoid data loss, right? So C is not correct. And D, D says documenting risks related to a given user story in a test plan to facilitate the risk-based testing of a given user story. So documenting risk related to a given user story in a test plan, I think that pretty much happens earlier. And at the same time, this is not something which solves my purpose of uh, documenting the acceptance criteria. However, risk-based testing is one of the strategy which we use to define the proportionate effort to conduct testing on risk areas, but it's not something which basically solves my purpose of documenting the acceptance criteria. So in that context, put together, the right answer for this question is B, that is using the given when then format to describe an example test condition related to a given user story is the approach or the format, which is scenario oriented, which we use for documenting the acceptance criteria. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. And the next question we have is question number 29. And this question is related to ATDD. And we are talking about the scenario given to you with the sample example here. So question number 29 talking about consider the following user story. And the user story is as an editor, I want to review content before it is published so that I can assure the grammar is correct. Number one thing you should identify from here is that the profile is editor. The purpose is review on the content that is editor is trying to do that. And that is of course, before publishing it, and the objective from this particular user story they want to accomplish is assuring the grammar is correct before it goes live into a particular page or blog spot, wherever it is. So few things which we need to take away from here is the profile, the activity and the outcome, right? That's the format of writing a user story. Now let's look at the acceptance criteria provided to this. Acceptance criteria says the user can log in to the content management system with editor role. That's perfectly fine. The editor can view existing content pages. Yes, that's what they want to do. Editor can edit the page content because they are here to edit. The editor can add markup comments. That is for someone who is going to correct those changes. The editor can save the changes. Of course, they should be able to save the changes in order to supply it back to the person who can uh, fix this. And finally, the editor can reassign to the content owner role to make the required updates. I think all the acceptance criteria are well aligned to that of user story at this point of time. And there's nothing seems to be deviating with that of the uh, user story. So what exactly is the question? The question is, which of the following is best example of an ATDD test for this user story? Okay, got it. So we remember there's something called as ATDD acceptance test driven development. And here we derive test from acceptance criteria. That means we would like to know which of these following tests is very much relevant to that of given acceptance criteria and which of these is not related to the acceptance criteria. That's the only point because in ATDD, the tests are driven from acceptance criteria directly. So let's quickly look at the option because that is what will help us to answer that. So option A says, 
test if the editor can save the document after editing the page content. See, that's one of the acceptance criteria directly. So yes, it should help me to add this test very well with respect to ATDD. B, test if content owner can log in and make updates to the content. See, of course, at the end, I'm passing it on to the comment, uh, content owner to make the corrections with respect to the updates. That is, whatever the editor shares, they would, should be able to do that. But this user story is not for the content owner. This user story is for editor and all the acceptance criteria written there are talking particularly about editor itself. So this test is not relevant to the editor, whereas it's talking about content owner to log in, which might not be a part of this user story. However, some other user story will be talking about us. So this is not relevant. Okay, this is how we judge because a user story is about a particular purpose. And even if a user story does not talk about it, this is ATDD. I must derive test cases only from the acceptance criteria. And none of the acceptance criteria is talking about that a content owner should also be able to log in. Okay, the last activity is to reassign to content owner, right? So there will be another story for that. And C, test if editor can schedule the edited content for publication. Again, that's not listed anywhere in my acceptance criteria. That is, uh, editor should be able to schedule the publish of this particular document after review. So C also gets ruled out. Whereas D says, test if the editor can reassign to another editor to make update. Now, I think that makes it very clear that D is also incorrect. The reason is, the objective or acceptance criteria nowhere says that editor can reassign the document to another editor. At the end, one of the acceptance criteria is saying that editor can reassign to the content owner to make the updates. So this is also contradicting. Now, if you look all the options carefully, these options are not so relevant to that of the acceptance criteria that is B, C and D. But A pretty much talks about saving the document and that's one of the acceptance criteria. So put together, the right answer to this particular question is A, test if the editor can save the document after edit the page content. That is after editing the page content. So I hope that makes it pretty clear that how exactly some of the complicated situations can also be handled simply and easily with having a proper attention to detail and being very kind of, you know, uh, patient while reading these options. Your level of attention matters a lot. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.